Richardson Balinda, teacher in Akasura School. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Dear Lord, on this pass out day of patriotism training of head teachers for secondary schools from greater western region, Movenda and Kasanda district, on this 3rd February 2024, 
at the National Leadership Institute and Kwanzi, I, your servant, Reverend Belinda Richardson, worship and exalt your holy name with all my heart as the most powerful, glorious, splendid, majestic, owner and governor of everything in heaven and earth, as your servant Moses says in First Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 11. Together as a congregation, we recognize you as the first greatest teacher of patriotism as we read in your word, Matthew 22, 39, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 8, that without love, all other things are of no great value. We also thank you for the great vision you gave to our most loved president, His Excellency General Kaguta Yoweri Museveni, especially in the current transformation pillars of developing our country. That is patriotism, Pan-Africanism, socioeconomic transformation, and democracy. It is true that the young ones will see and realize the fruits thereof, as Prophet Joel, Joel says in chapter 2, verse 28. I sincerely stand in the hearts of many of us here today to truly confess that we came with partial truth and dimness of vision, as St. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 to 12. But now we are going back fully loaded with absolute truth to join our president and his entire team in the heavy burden on his head to transform the mindset of the hundreds and thousands of people entrusted to us as Jethro advised Moses in Exodus chapter 18, verse 20, 19 to 24, to champion the cause. Thank you, Lord, for our mother ministry of education and sports. Under the wise, humble, and Holy Spirit-filled leadership of Mama Janet Kataha Museveni, who is like the wise woman King Solomon described, in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 29 to 31, she has been a great blessing to this country in general and in particular to the education sector, continue blessing her. Our loving God, we don't have enough words to describe our appreciation for the commitment of the Commissioner of Patriotism, Madam Helen Seku, and her entire team, the Nali leadership, the best trainers and facilitators, most graceful Lord, bless them mightily and expand the vision and mission of patriotism in this country. We commit this academic year of our schools and our country in your able hands for peace and prosperity. Accept our resolved commitment to implement the lessons learned in this training and support us holistically. Let this day be a great day filled with happiness. As your servant Solomon says in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, that the end of an undertaking is always better than its beginning. I make this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you, remain with you now and always. Thank you very much, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, our awaited guests are in the house. May we welcome them with an applause. Karibu sana! Yonge sana! Yamwisho sasa! Thank you. Your Excellence, allow me to take you through the program as brief as it is. 
we shall have an entertainment by one of your Bazukulu called Princess Mary Sanam Juzi. And we shall have the reading of the memorandum by Aguo Christine, head teacher, Nyarukoma SS Chenjojo. We shall have remarks by the Commissioner of Patriotism, myself. We shall have remarks by the Director of NALI, that is none other than Brigadier General Dr. Charles Kisebo. We shall have remarks by Honorable Minister, Mr. Babalanda, Minister for Presidency. Then in return, she shall welcome Mama to give her remarks and lecture. Then Mama shall invite you, Jaja, to talk to these head teachers with your words of wisdom and guidance. And we shall have anthems in reverse order. After the anthems, we shall have a photo of opportunity in our companies. There are four companies, and then the last photo shall be for the staff, invited guests, and Nali staff. That is how our program is. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Your Excellency, permit me also to introduce to you our invited guests tonight. In the house, we have the Minister for Presidency, Honorable Mide Babalanda, with us. Kari Butana. We also have the, ha the PS for Min Minister of the Presidency, Haji Yunus Kakande, who has just recovered from treatment. We thank God for his life. We have Engineer Raymond Kamjusha, Director of Presidential Projects and Industrial Hubs Initiative. We have the RDC of Changkwanzi. Ms. Sharon Akankunda. We have the LOC5 of this place, Dr. Mpuga John. We have the DPC of this place, SSP, YV, Philbert. We have the DEO of this place, Mr. Kabukuba Ibrahim. We have the Secretary of Education, Changkwanzi, Mr. Twes J. Ibra. We have the LOC1 hosting us, Mr. Sabit William. We have Mr. Musingo Moses, Assistant Commissioner of Secondary Education from the Ministry of Education, representing the PS of Education. We have the DIS of this place, Lieutenant Dennis Katumba. And we have also our brothers from the MK movement, Ambassador Katunji Michael, Brother Baram Barugahare, and Frank Gashumba, who have also come to learn more about patriotism and preach the right gospel to the public. And also know in advance that uh, the dams are so many, so the generator may never start. Thank you, my elder brothers, for coming. I'm really humbled. At this juncture, allow me to invite Princess Melissa to welcome Jaja with a warm welcome and entertainment. We should all shake to our best to really show Jaja that we are happy. Melissa, come and give us your best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Princess Melissa, eh, eh, Okay, it's nice to meet you, Jaja Mami and Jaja Mchala. This is Namjuzi Melissa Princess, known as Princess Melissa. Uh, I'm the one whom you met last time from Magele. I'm in senior four at Light College at home that is located at, Mas at Masulita. So I'm going to give you two songs, but let's start with Jajoli Mizira. Yes. Then we shall go to 
My name is Christine Aguo, head teacher, Nyarukoma Secondary School, Chenjojo District. Your Excellency, I'm one of the beneficiaries of patriotism, peace, and stability of Uganda, and they gave me another name because of my service in another area of Uganda. I'm going to read for you a memoranda that the attorneys have brought forward. Memorandum by Western Uganda Mubende Kansanga Secondary School Head Teachers, Kasanda Secondary School Head Teachers at a training retreat for patriotism at Nari Chiang Transi starting on 21st January to date 3rd. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, the First Lady and Honorable Minister of Education and Sports, Mama Janet Kataha Museveni, Honorable Members and Ministers, Honorable Members of Parliament present, Head of Patriotism, Director Nali, Invited guests, all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, thank you for coming to share with us your parental wisdom and guidance. We congratulate you on being elected chairperson of the non Align Movement, NAM, and the G77 Plus China. Afsam Sisana. We welcome Mama Janet Kataha Museveni, First Lady and Minister of Education and Sports, for attending our pass out. We thank you, Mama, for your patriotic service to this country. As participants, 
we express appreciation to Ms. Helen Teku, the Commissioner and the entire National Secretariat of Patriotism Corps and the staff and for organizing this enriching training. We personally direct our Brigadier General Dr. Charles Kipembo Aita for hosting and teaching distinguished leaders of this country, such as Vice President of the Republic of Uganda, the Right Honorable Secretary General NRM, the Right Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister of Presidency, Mile Babalanda, Right Honorable Lieutenant General Peter Eluelu, Honorable Major General Henry Matsiko, Honorable Major General Sam Kavuma, Honorable Brigadier General Charity Bainalabo, Brigadier General Henry Isoke, Brigadier General Dr. Charles Kisembo, Brigadier General Fels Kulaije, and the PS. Minister of Education and Sport, among many other patriots. Your Excellency, in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 7, an iron sharpens iron. And so, one person sharpens another. They have sharpened us. From this training, we noted that NRM government has defended and promoted well the right ideology to ensure democracy, patriotism, pan-Africanism, and socioeconomic transformation. Your Excellency, thank you for considering us for this transformative training. Your Excellency, we have collectively come up with the following views. Unanimously agreed to take the message of patriotism to our schools and communities to promote positive attitude to enhance unity and development in our country. Secondly, we give unwavering support to the NRM government and mobilize the Vazukulu to follow the right way to ensure uninterrupted progress that our country is proud of and enjoying. To promote unity by encouraging the youth to overcome social barriers of tribalism, ethnicity, or religion, and focus on nationalism and socioeconomic transformation. The other is to strengthen patriotism-related programs in schools to enhance discipline and productivity among learners and other communities. To ensure that students learn appropriate skills as underscored in the revised towards secondary school curriculum, so as to produce quality citizens that will serve to transform our country to the desired development. That the values of patriotism, hard work, sacrifice, integrity, loyalty be inculcated in the learners to produce reliable and honest citizens who will continue to work for prosperity. We also agree that to ensure proper accountability and transparency in our institution and support government efforts to fight corruption. Your Excellency. The participants appreciate your initiation of Parish Development Model, PDM, to cause socioeconomic transformation at local level. The teachers play a central role in enhancing the program. There are find a way to facilitate them to be innovative and encourage citizens to exploit Uganda's natural resources for my financial prosperity and socioeconomic growth to attain Vision 2040. Your Excellency, the participants equally appreciate the adoption and implementation of the revised lower secondary school curriculum since 2021 
it is our view that this will significantly enhance the realization of Uganda education system as an effective tool for socioeconomic transformation through skills develop development. Your Excellency, the trainers here have requests to put forth. Your Excellency, participants unanimously observe that fascism training is a real solution to Ugandan problems. Therefore, we hereby propose the following views. First and foremost, we request for more training of teachers for the National Curriculum Development Center, that is NCDC, and the Ministry of Education and Sports to empower the teachers to ensure the success of the curriculum as we prepare for the advanced level in 2025, so as to nurture a holistic citizen in the transformation of Uganda. We appreciate the provision of instructional materials to kickstart the revised curriculum and request that more be given to all schools in form of ICT, science laboratory equipment, and textbooks. Your Excellency, the participants appreciate your support of patriotism with uniform and literature to our schools. We request for more uniforms and literature, for students to boost moral training and other patriotism activities. Your Excellency, we suggest that patriotism training be extended to all public servants and religious leaders. Also, as the saying goes, akati keinikwa kakiri kavisi, literally interpreted as literally translated as uh, the small, small sticks, the young stick will be, cannot be bent when it is still young. Beg your pardon. Yes, akati kainekwa kakiri kavisi. We have understood. So, the same patriotism training be extended to the primary school department for ideological orientation to help primary school leaders and pupils appreciate their country at their early stages of development. Your Excellency, to ensure quality patriotic civil servants for the, to ensure quality of patriotic civil servants for the present and future Uganda, we propose that patriotism budget be increased to widen the scope of training to include national service programs to enable the youth of the school know and serve their country effectively, diligently, without corruption and other vices. Your Excellency, the participants also please, please and were saying, with the support given to some RRDCs and RRCCs in this promotion of patriotism in schools. It is our humble prayer that all the RRDCs, RRCCs receive this training to empower them to support this noble cause. Your Excellency, thank you for the recent recruitment and deployment of staff to schools in this country. Some schools have to get new liberal state staff due to the inadequate wage bill at the local government. It is therefore our humble request that this matter be addressed to enable schools to receive more staff to handle the rising number of learners. Your Excellency, secondary school education is one of the services that utilizes private public partnership, PPP with over 60% schools owned by the private sector. This in mind implies that most youth attend secondary school education in privately owned schools. Your Excellency, the private schools do appreciate the provision of instructional materials in the recent years and humbly request that 
more support in terms of ICTs through science laboratory equipment, electricity and more textbooks be extended to them as they continue to partner with the government in the provision of education for the young generation. The participants are thankful to the government for the newly constructed seeds and community schools across the country. There is rise in the enrollment of learners that demands for urgent expansion of infrastructure in schools to boost their capacity to accommodate the big number of learners for a conducive and effective learning environment. Your Excellency, it is our humble prayer that the universal secondary education, the universal post all level education and training, and non-use and new polite schools would receive more facilities, especially classrooms. Head teachers appreciate the enhancement of salaries for head teachers, deputy head teachers, all teachers of science subjects. It is a remarkable step that has inspired the head teachers, deputy head teachers, and the teachers of art subjects to patriotically keep on right professional track as you continue to plan for them. Participants appreciate the timely payment of captation grants to youth or youth schools. The local governments have done a good job in crediting the school accounts on time. We request for increment in funding so as to enable schools cope with the rising costs for more effective teaching and learning. Your Excellency, in conclusion, we would like to affirm that our experience, our study of Uganda political history, and our thoroughly training at Nali are a, a, a sufficient for us to tell right or wrong and to discern ideology and bio, from biology. Long live Uganda, long live Your Excellency, long live most cherished president prepared by all the participants and trainees of this school Nali, Asan Sana. Thank you very much, head teacher, for that brief memorandum. Your Excellency, allow me to introduce my co MC, Major Daniel Watasa Masera, who's the head of faculty in this great institution. Allow me also to introduce the National Patriotism Secretariat staff, staff and the Might Youth Stand Up for Recognition. Your Excellency, Yeyo Ameyo Jewampa. Your Excellency, at this juncture, allow me to give my remarks. Then in return, I shall invite others. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda and the patron for patriotism clubs in Uganda, Mama, the Honorable First Lady, Minister of Education and Sport, Honorable Minister for Presidency, the PS, Minister of Presidency, Director Nali, all gallant officers and men from Uganda People's Defense Forces, Patriotism Secretariat staff, all invited guest participants, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I humbly welcome you, sir, together with the Mama, to this occasion. On behalf of the National P Secretariat for Patriotism, allow me to thank Your Excellency and Mama for finding time amid your busy schedule to come and interact with the head teachers present here today. Thank you, all invited guests, for accepting. Thank you, all invited guests, for accepting to grace action at Nali and be part of my first pass out as a commissioner of patriotism. We thank the almighty God who has enabled this day to come. Jaja and Mama, 
It is my pleasure to thank you for giving me an opportunity to serve Patriotism Secretariat as a commissioner for the Patriotism Clubs in Uganda. That means there is negation of the negation. And thank you, Jack, for fronting the youth everywhere you go. Your Excellency and Mama, before you are 413 secondary head teachers from Greater Western Uganda, a few from the districts of Kastanda and Mubende who had missed out last time due to Ebola. Majority of these head teachers double as patriotism coordinators in their various schools and they are the beneficiaries of the 14 days training that has happened in this place. Jaja, I wish to inform you that this training marks the end of our first phase of the head teachers training countrywide, which you and I started together on 9th August 2022 with Northern Uganda and West Nile, where we got 300 participants, followed by Eastern, where we trained 368 head teachers, followed by Central, where we trained 514 head teachers, then finally Western Region, where we have trained 413 head teachers, though we had programmed for 520, a few didn't turn up for different causes. In total, we have so far trained 1,535 secondary head teachers, who are your mighty army and foot soldiers in their various areas and communities. <laughs> These head teachers have undergone the ideological orientation training, which is very important in the realization of our vision 2040, while emphasizing the core values of patriotism, discipline, academic excellence, time management, and the fear of God. Jaja, on 14 Feb, February 2009, you started the patriotism clubs mainly to inculcate norms and values of patriotism to learners through acquisition of knowledge, new skills, and competencies. Jaja, to inform you, I wish to, to inform you I was in senior six that time and I'm a beneficiary of that program, which has groomed me to be what I am today. And after that training, I became a volunteer at the Patriotism Secretariat while at the university in law school. 13 years down the road, you have sent me there to head the same institution as the commissioner. Thank you for the opportunity once again. And thank you for grooming me and granting me the golden opportunity to serve the noble cause. And I promise never to let you down, Jaja and Mama. <laughs> Mama, we thank you and the entire Ministry of Education and Sport for ensuring that patriotism is part of the new secondary education curriculum. Jaja and Mama, patriotism has now outlived secondary school only. And we pray that it should also be extended to PTCs, NTCs, universities, and communities, and be made compulsory in all institutions, including the public and civil servants, before one acquires a government job, in order to avoid bad vices like corruption, bribery, and being compromised. There is a general observation that teachers pay much attention to academics than producing an all-round learner who is productive and well-disciplined citizen with the right attitude towards self, work, and the country. I wish to thank these head teachers for exhibiting a high sense of discipline for the days we have been here together. You willingly participated in the training, both ideology and parade skills, keep close to that which you have learned, especially the discipline, the resilience you gained from the parade drills. Keep at your fingertips the patriotism discipline, values, methods of work, and knowledge. The Bible says in the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, my people have perished due to lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I shall reject you. 
while in the book of James chapter 3 verse 1, it is said, teachers shall be judged more strictly for they know more. I commend you patriots and head teachers for accepting to embrace knowledge so as to become change makers or agents in your communities. Therefore, follow fellow, pa fellow patriots, go and spread the gospel of patriotism correctly in your schools and communities so that you are not judged otherwise. Your Excellency and Mama, I wish to report that after the retooling and orienta reorientation of head teachers of Central, Central Region in Uganda, in this same place, they went back and organized the trainings in their different schools voluntarily, and we later had a joint pass out of all Kampala schools at Kololo finished November 2023, which was mega, and you graced it yourself, which had over 45,000 students from Kampala. And also in the, in the month of December, we were welcomed at Intare School on invitation by Mr. Sol Rampororo, the head teacher, who calls this senior OB, where we trained 1,700 students for the entire school without senior one and senior five are not present at that time, but we promise to go back this year and do the same, and we shall carry out the same spirit in other schools and the cities countrywide, if our budget is enhanced. Your Excellence and Mama, these head teachers here have pledged to do the same in their schools, and I have confidence in them that they shall do so. Your Excellence and Mama, I assure you that through this program, these head teachers have surely inherited and will continue inheriting your re revolutionary tradition of patriotism, nationalism, pan-Africanism, out outlook for prosperity and strategic security. The ideologically empowered head teachers, therefore, have no reason to abandon their ally. And I am confident that as defenders of this revolution, they are behind the popular call by the majority of the citizens, as it was already stated by NAM and stipulated by G77 delegates, who have decided to demand for your continued stewardship of this country as head of state. Come 2026, those who are in, in agreement with me say aye. aye. The aye have it. Your Excellency, it's an order. You don't refute the order. And I'm the nominator. I still stand as the nominator and the sponsor of His Excellency. So I know he will not let me down. I congratulate you all gallant sons and daughters of the soil upon the completion of a successful 14 day patriotism development training course. And I believe your experience will impact a critical thinking and mindset change of socioeconomic transformation. And I take this opportunity to thank the Minister, Office of the President, Honorable Mire Babalanda, the PS Hajunus Kakande, for your continued support, and all the NSPC staff for sharing this noble cause. I also want to thank the Director Nali and the entire staff at Nali for hosting us and making our stay comfortable in this great leadership institution, which we call home. I thank all facilitators who spend their time to come and share their wisdom and guidance with these participants, like the Vice President, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, the Right Honorable Secretary General, the PPS to Mama Dr. Irene Kauma, the UPDF Generals, the Commandant Oliver Tambo Kanorukundo Justice, Director Presidential Hub Engineer Rai Mondi, Kamjisha, and many more. Thank you for your time and for giving these people words of wisdom. I also thank. <laughs> I take this singular honor to also thank my dear elder brothers, the MK Movement supporters, who have appreciated that the main line has got so many newly constructed dams, which may not enable the standby generator to start soon. Thank you, Mr. Balambakahari and Gashumba. Thank you, Mr. Katunji, for coming together. And we accept we work together for the noble cause.
to ensure that the main line is now charged with the four phase voltage, never to go off. I thank your excellency and mama and all the participants for listening. Thank you, Jaja, for always pairing your busy schedules to attend to my cause. Long live Jaja and Mama. Long live Patriotism Club. The struggle continues for God and my country. I remain your submitted Muzukulu. Seku Helen, Commissioner Patriotism and Private Secretary to H is a President. Asante Sanya. In brief, Your Excellency, those were my remarks. Your Excellency, at this juncture, allow me to invite another Muzukulu to give you another warm welcome. This Muzukulu is from Masaka, a Muganda who speaks Swahili. He says, Mbona joko ni iko Tanzania alafu nyumbani ko Uganda. Tunalala Uganda, tunashinda Tanzania. Your Excellency, I'm going to use Swahili because these head teachers in the school, they force us to speak English. Article 6 of the 1995 Constitution as amended states that English is the official language and clause 2 says any other language shall be used as appropriate. I therefore take this singular honor to use Swahili. Your Excellency, the youth before you is going to entertain you now is the son of your own Kadogo Ibrahim Nyanzi from Masaka. Mwenyalukua nayo kwa mstuni. Sasa, hako na mtoto, kijana, nyana kuimbia wimbo, lakini kutoka tangu, ajabatika kuimbilia. Anaitwa Nyanzi Isan, a.k.a. Young Divyo. Nyali sema, nataka ni wone mseveni, is present today. Young Divyo, come and sing, kuja wimbia grandfather. Umebatika leo, ya ni hako hapa. Sena hako mtoto ya askari. Watoto ya askari wako natale, nito sicheze buwana. Asante sana madam. Enalem oye. Baba yo elikaguta mseveni oye. Shuja oye. Mama Janet mseveni oye. Kamishona madam ele mseku oye. Mama, mama mile babalanta oye. O papa, yanga defi. Thank you. 
Even Jaja will give us a job of Jaja if time is there. Zebai Banganga Valieri Nebakadogo Valley. Allow me at this juncture invite General Doctor Charles Chisemo to give us his brief remarks in five minutes. And after I invite Honorable Mili Babalanda to also give us her remarks in five minutes, then invite Mama. Thank you, Doctor, and congratulations. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Uganda, Commander-in-Chief of Uganda, General Y.K. Museveni Chibohabu, retired. The Honorable Minister of Education and Sports and First Lady, Mama Janet Kataha Museveni. The Minister for Presidency, Honorable Minister Babalanda. The Permanent Secretary Ministry for the President, Haji Yunus Kakande. The Resident District Commissioner, Chiangkwanzi, Ms. Sharuna Kankunda. The Commissioner National Secretariat of Patriotism Club, Ms. Helen Seku. The district leaders in your respective capacities, guests, Nali Fraternity, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, allow me on behalf of Nali and my behalf to welcome you and Mama to this great institution. Your Excellency, today, we witness yet another milestone in our effort to enhance ideology and political work among Ugandans. We are happy to say that today another batch of 413 head teachers from Greater Western Uganda is being added onto those Ugandans that have trained in this institute. This is the last batch of head teachers to be trained since you in initiated this uh, process. Your Excellency, we are so grateful to you and Mama for always putting at the forefront the need to create an effective human resource base, which is a trigger for Uganda's social economic transformation. I also thank the Minister for the Presidency, Honorable Mile Babalanda, for being supportive in every way we have sought her hand. Your Excellency, let me also commend your Muzukulu, Commissioner Helen Seku, for being focused and committed. She's always, this one she said I shouldn't say it in public, Your Excellency. But let me say it. She's always telling me that Mose's tasks needed to be accomplished. All the time, Mose's tasks. She's so committed. And as some of us reach the evenings of our careers, as some of us reach the evenings of our careers, we feel happy and energized when we see the younger generation working with the resilience and enthusiasm in the service of their country. Your Excellency, we are aware that our country is struggling to pull down the shackles of imperialism and the unfair structures of globalization, affecting global financial architecture, security, and politics. And this poses a significant challenge to Africa. Therefore, for Uganda to survive and achieve its economic and political independence needs knowledgeable, committed, patriotic, patient, and visionary leaders. Leaders who understand the implications and impact of these global complexities and infringements on our national values and aspirations. Your Excellency, at Nali we are committed to creating such leaders. The course participants got lectures, as you have already heard, from several government officials, the Vice President, the Prime Minister, academicians, UPDF generals, senior officers, to mention the most obvious. The participants during their stay here went through rigorous training and interaction covering the following topics. Ideology and patriotism studies, ways of thinking and understanding reality, transformative discipline and revolutionary methods of work, meaning and values of political education, laws of social development and social systems, harnessing resources for empowerment and prosperity through pragmatic leadership, economic geography of Uganda, national guidance, globalization, tips on fighting corruption, 
roles of head teachers in patriotism development in Uganda, drills and skills at arms, financial literacy, and Kiswahili among others. This is a message to my fellow teachers. To my fellow teachers, from our interactions, you have learned that I'm also a teacher. And as teachers, we are the backbone of our country, the pillar upon which all aspirations are converted to realities. The aspirations of the students we teach in a way become our aspirations. Every leader, every learner aspires to be great in life, to pursue an enduring and rewarding career, to live better and more meaningful lives. And as teachers, our aspirations are realized when the learners we teach and mold succeed in life. Many of us might have joined the profession because we love the children and truly want to change their lives. There might also be those who chose the career for benefits, whichever reason. Educators change lives, for the better or for worse. If we want to get the best out of those we mentor, let's have time for them. Let us sacrifice for them, and let's make them feel worthy. Let them be heard. Let us be teachers of humans and not schools where those with the required degrees only matter. Together we want to create leaders whom Uganda should be proud of. And I'm sure the knowledge acquired here will help us do that. For God and my country. Let me now take this singular honor to invite the Minister for Presidency, Honorable Mile Babalan, to give her remarks. Thank you. Excellency, President of the Republic of Uganda, Commander-in-Chief of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, National Chairperson of the Mighty Patenare, our Chief Patriot, and number one pillar in the Uganda's transformation, retired General Yoel Kaguta Seven. Hi, Excellency, Mama, and Minister of Education and Sports, Majinet Kataam Seven, the PS Office of the President, Haji Yunus Kakande, the Commissioner, Patriotism Secretariat, Office of the President, Mrs. Helen Seku, senior officials from the Minister of Education and Sports, the Director Nari, the RDC Chankwanzi, all participants, ladies and gentlemen. Excellency Sir, I take the opportunity to welcome you and to congratulate all our participants for successfully undertaking the patriotism course here at National Leadership Institute, Chankwanzi. Excellencies, sir, I wish to commend the NRM party under your leadership for coming up with the four core principles of the NRM which have been the driving force behind the progress of Ugandans and transformation of the economy. Excellencies, sir, patriotism is the most important of the four core principles. Everything rotates around this principle. Indeed, you cannot succeed in the other three without patriotism. Patriotism can be promoted singly, but the others cannot succeed without patriotism. Therefore, your efforts at championing patriotism is not a waste of time. You are building a base that will inspire future generations to hold together. Your Excellency, sir, 
While some persons may not see the value of the patriotism campaign now, yet in the years to come, they will see its benefits and the fact that you were right. Your Excellency, allow me to once again appreciate you for appointing Commissioner Helen Seku to head the patriotism secretariat. She's a well-focused, hard-working, and results-oriented person in whom we have much expectation. I am delighted that Mrs. Seku is already active in the fight against corruption, going by her deep engagement with public officers in the patriotism campaign. Your Excellency, sir, the government has lost significant resources at the hands of some unpatriotic public officers who divert taxpayers' money for personal gain. The engagement with the public officers will go a long way to fight this vice in our midst. Your Excellency, sir, I congratulate the teachers of Western Uganda who have participated in this training and it is my prayers that they become patriotism ambassadors in their respective schools in order to promote patriotism amongst fellow staff and the learners. Your Excellency, in Rusoga and Devaganda say, like what the editors say, that Akacha Mamamera suggest that if one suffers more growth while still young, the defect may be very difficult to correct when they are adults. Therefore, the patriotism campaign among the young people is indeed the wisest thing to do now because the problems we have today actually originate from the past regimes that did not prioritize patriotism, education, in the young people of that time. These same people, now adults in public positions, are the ones giving us hard time, stealing and wasting public resources, Your Excellency. As I conclude, sir, allow me also to let you know that the RDCs, RCCs, and their deputies have taken several training of patriotism, at least in every quarter. I thank you for your kind attention, and it's now my honor and privilege to invite Her Excellency Mama, the First Lady and Minister of Education and Sport, to come and address the participants. Thank you, and I congratulate you, the participants, for God and my country. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Babaranda. Your Excellency, the President of Uganda, the Honorable Minister for the Presidency, Honorable Babaranda, the Director Nali and your team, Ms. Helen Seku, the Commissioner for Youth Affairs, our participants, the head teachers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. Your Excellency, I want to thank you for never failing to make the time out of your busy schedule to meet with the teachers from whichever region of our country. Therefore, we thank you for coming this time to meet this cohort from the Western region who are here for patriotism, for patriotism training and ideological orientation. Thank you. I sincerely appreciate your continuous guidance 
to the education sector and your availability whenever we call upon you to facilitate our capacity building programs. Before you here today are the frontline managers of our education system who are charged with the responsibility to ensure that our schools function and that our children learn. They make decisions on a daily basis to enable teaching and learning to take place in schools across the country. Therefore, I'm very happy that they are here to acquire additional knowledge and skills and tools to enable them to handle their work effectively, and they strive to serve their country selflessly and contribute positively to national development. Your Excellency, you have always emphasized that uh, one of the bottlenecks to development is an undeveloped human resource, a problem that must be addressed in order for us to attain a knowledgeable, skilled, and patriotic population. Furthermore, Your Excellency, as you are aware, the Minister of Education and Sport is charged with the responsibility for human resource development for our country. So over the years, we have promoted several reform initiatives to ensure that quality education is equitably accessible to all children of Uganda. You have also emphasized the need to have a citizenry that are knowledgeable and that love their country because this motivates them to commit to do their best for the nation. Consequently, I thank the National Secretariat for Patriotism for promoting patriotic values in schools. And I must now express my gratitude to you for bringing on board head teachers from all regions of Uganda. In order to strengthen the efforts to inculcate patriotic values to our youth through the established patriotism clubs in schools, it is very important that the head teachers are empowered to coordinate these efforts through the school system. We should be able to develop youth who understand the purpose of their existence, who love their country, and are prepared to defend and transform it. I'm therefore pleased that the head teachers have all undergone this mindset change program, and it is my hope and prayer that we will now see the impact of our efforts in our schools. I believe that the head teachers gathered here this afternoon and all those that were trained in the past have now joined the cadre of enlightened citizens who are committed to their national service. We hope that they will aggressively promote the patriotic values of selflessness, of loyalty, responsibility, of discipline, of hard work, resilience, and sacrifice through their own work. To the head teachers, I thank God for each and every one of you. I'm aware of the great job that you are doing in your respective schools amidst the challenges that we all experience. I also congratulate you for successfully completing the academic year 2023, and I believe it's not too late to say Happy New Year to you all. I'd like to remind you that God has entrusted you with the stewardship of the younger generation. And I urge you to be role models for the teachers and the students you nurture in your schools. And they will surely emulate what they see you do more than what they hear you say. Please remember that. Together, slowly but surely, we will build a generation of citizens that are proud of their country and that can inspire those they interact with 
in their various communities to do the same. Now that this training has uh, covered all the head teachers across the country, I'd like to remind all of you that being patriotic is a constitutional duty. If we inculcate these values within the schools, we will surely have not just very peaceful schools, but very clean schools with green students, with perimeter green fences, so that your schools provide the kind of environment where all parents are proud to take their children. So let me re-emphasize the importance of making every effort to build a culture of patriotism and peaceful coexistence within the schools you manage and the communities that you live in. But patriotism comes at a cost. That means there is extra work that you must be willing to do to show your love for your homeland. For instance, you must be determined to ensure that the school you lead stands out as an example to others with clean walls, clean students who pass their exams highly. And remember the saying that cleanliness is only next to godliness. Please know that those principles you instill in those young people will live through them to another generation of their own children. That is why teachers should not take their job for granted because you are co-workers or co-creators with God and God values you and the work you do because you're molding God's children. Therefore, head teachers are very important leaders, even more because you are the ones who hold the destiny of those schools that have hundreds of young lives in your hands. If you are honest, clean, kind, and hardworking, you will surely pass these values on to those young minds. But if you are corrupt, if you lie to those children, then corruption will catch on like wildfire. Please ensure that your school community cherishes love for one another, peace in the community, selfless service for your country, with hard work, with honesty and accountability. This is where we can introduce the fight against corruption. The corruption begins at that level, at that age. If you start with a fight of corruption in those schools for, and provide the example for those children to see the head teacher, the teachers who are honest, who do all things right, and speak the truth always, they will never know corruption in their lives. Therefore, I pray that as you start the first time of this new year, this year, 2024, will be a year of peace with the knowledge you have acquired here. We must take the issue of discipline in schools seriously because it is possible to have peaceful schools. Please be the ambassadors of that peace. Be close to your teachers and students and create a supportive environment. Make it your goal to raise responsible citizens for this country. Furthermore, it is at this time that I must remind you that this is the year that our first cohort in the lower secondary will sit to the exams from the new secondary school curriculum at the end of this year. Therefore, both the teachers and the children need your support this year more than ever before. Make the time at school to do everything it will take to ensure that the first exams of the new lower secondary curriculum with both UNEB and the schools that have prepared which, which both UNEP and the schools have prepared for already 
will be done properly and all honor and glory will go to our God. As I conclude now, it is my hope and prayer that what you have learned here will indeed be useful and its impact will be felt in your schools, within your communities, and across this nation. I wish you all the best of 2024. Finally, let me sincerely commend the Director Nali and his entire administration for always being willing to support the Ministry of Education and Sports and for your hospitality to all the guests we bring to you. Thank you for your great efforts in training Ugandans and for maintaining NALI as an institute that we are all proud of. Your Excellency, it is now my singular honor to invite you to address these head teachers. I thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. The Honorable Ministers, the Permanent Secretary, the Commissioner of Patriotism, all the staff of, of Chiang Kwanzi, and the head teachers who are here for the course. First of all, I want to thank Helen Seku because she has really re re done, re resurrected the effort for, for patriotism and she has rightly focused on some crucial change agents like you, the head teachers. So I want to thank her. There is a group called Banyankwere. Have you heard of those people? Those Banyankwere have a proverb which says, the, I, I want to congratulate my granddaughter, the head teacher who was struggling with Rinyankwere. Akati Ken Wakarikavisi. It means the, a, a plant or a stick, a, 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 a plant or a, a stick is more easily bent when it is when it is fresh when it dries when you try to br to, to bend it it breaks it's so dry so don't wait for it to dry the, the, that's one of their proverbs those by and, and, and the other groups from western uganda now the other one is Engelezeire, Teri Wambwa, a white hog that has got children, when the dogs come to attack it, then the, ch the children of the white hog defend it. So now these grandchildren of the white hog, the, the circles, they, they are really uh, doing a good job. And if you study the circle carefully, her father, is an army officer. I think he must be like a colonel now. What rank is he, your father? Excellent. He's a lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant colonel. He's an engineer in the army. So you can see now the the, the, the social group, the new new forces, but coming out of the old old ones, it's, it's, it is very interesting. So I thank her very much for being very active and very committed and pushing and being frustrated and continuing. Uh, I, I want to thank her very much. Now, according to what Brigadier Xembo said, I can see you have covered 
many of the topics. Of course, you people, you are educated people, you are, you are, you are head teachers. You have got masters in this, masters in that. But some of those masters, you may find they are masters in neocolonialism. Because, because this is the problem, this is the problem we had in the 1960s. This part of the world is a very old, has got very ancient societies. There were the Batembos here, who were here. When the Batembo, there was a group called Batembozi who were ruling this area. Then around 900 AD or thereabout, we got Batrezi who came and started managing here. Now, those Batrezi had sort of united us. We, we know about the 900 AD because of the excavation works done at Ntuti in Zimbabwe and Bigobiya Mjini. is also in Zimbabwe. Who are the, 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 the archaeologists were able to confirm that those settlements were from 900 AD to about 1350 AD. Unfortunately, that was Trezi dynasty. The Trezi, you can know them from their names, from oral history but also from the names. That's why you, you find those but names all over the place. In Uganda, in Bunyoro, Ankore, Congo, Tanzania, Bukoa, Karagwe, those names you will find them there. Names like Isimbwa, Baganda called him Simba, but it is the same thing. That was him crazy. Then you, you, you have like uh, Ndahora. Baganda called him Ndahora. Then you have Mukasa. Mukasa, the, the Western groups, Banyoro, Banyankore, called Mukasa Mugasha. Mugasha is the same as Mukasa. Then you have Wamara. You, you have Chomia. You have Kagoro. All of those were our trees. But when their dynasty collapsed around 1400, we don't know why we have not studied where, why it collapsed. Because it had really united this area. Even uh, what is Ankore now, Bunyoro, Toro, Achori, Buchiri. Buchiri language is called Buchiri, in, according to our, our history. These were Busoga, they were all being managed together that time by the Batres. The Wamara, Wamara was the last Mutres. Wamara. Wamara, Ranja, Jorge Bunga. That's how they were his, his praise names. Now, after that dynasty, then you had these groups which came later. 
the ones we talk about now, the, the Kawakas here in Uganda, uh, the Babito in Bunyoro Toro, these groups in Ankore, Abahinda, Ankore, Karagwe, all, all those Tanzania, they, they, those were the, the Bahinda group. And then the Bashambo from Pororo and, and Rwanda. So these small, smaller groups, when they came, they divided the people. And they started fighting among themselves. They started fighting wars between Buganda and Bunyoro, Buganda, Nkore, so on. Rwanda with the, with the Nkore and Pororo. So th that period from 1400 to the time when the Europeans came was time of, 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 of lack of peace. Lack of peace. And when the Europeans came, uh, of course these kings were not very clever because you are, you, are, you are teachers, you know a bit, you must know about history. Uh, but one reason I cannot forgive these kings is, is the bankruptcy in, the, in their perception. Because, okay, even if you didn't know that unity was crucial when you were by yourselves, But you who study the history of the world, you know that in 1498, a Portuguese man called Vasco da Gama went around the continent of Africa because there's also, <laughs> there's also another story there. You have, you have got your religious people like Reverend Badinda, who blessed us today, uh, and even you others who are not so religious. You must, have, you must have heard of the book, of the Acts of the Apostles. If you read the book of the Acts of the Apostles, you will find there the journeys of St. Paul. St. Paul, when he was going to spread the gospel, he was going through a country called Eshamaina. Eshamaina. Do we have, do we have, do we have history teachers here? There are some history people here. Okay, let me see one of them. Come forward. Come. Microphone. Did you hear of Asia Minor? Yes, Your Excellency. Where is it? Asia Minor is in Eastern Europe, Your Excellency. Is where? Eastern Europe. Istanbul. Is Eastern Europe? Yes, Your Excellency. Eastern Europe. Uh, yeah, in a way, yes, but where exactly? <laughs> Another historian who can help him. Your Excellency. Asia Minor is in the current country of Turkey. Turkey, yes, very good. Uh, a very old teacher. <laughs> who are you? Introduce yourself. Uh, and the other one who had, who had come to help me, introduce yourself. My name is Karhogo Yafes Ntungwa, the head teacher Chabenda SS in the Kamwenje district. Cha? Chabenda SS. Chabenda Ntungwa. Yes, sir. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Excellency. My name is Chief Hamza. Uh, I'm the teacher of, I teach of High West Chiganda, 
and the coordinator for patriotism Kasanda district secretariat thank you so much amanya sechizivu hamza sechizivu hamza yes sir very good so mtungwa has helped us what was being called a shamina in the book of the acts of the apostles where where places like ephesus you remember ephesus uh, Ephesus, Galatia, and those places uh, where they are is now Turkey. And then in the in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, you will get places like like Corinth. Corinth. Then you get places like uh, like Thessalonica and so on. Those are now in 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 Greek in Greece. So St. Paul was going through those areas. Now at that area, at that time, those areas were not were were occupied by different people. In fact, even me I have not found out which people were there. Were they Greeks? Were they who what sort of people were there? But what happened is that in fourteen fifty three AD a new group of people came from Central Asia and captured that area. And these people who came were Muslims and Turkish. So when they captured that, 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 uh, uh, it was called, the, 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 the main city there was called Constantinople. But it is now called Istanbul, Turkey. So when they captured it, you remember in your history, there was another pharaoh called Marco Polo. Did you hear of that pharaoh? Uh, that Marco Polo was somebody, I think he was from Italy. He walked on foot up to China and back and opened a trade route. Which you, which you hear the president of China now referring to as the Silk, Silk Road, the road along which silk, silk was being transported from the east to the west, and spices. So the Europeans had come to depend on that, on that, ru on that route. So when the Turkish captured Constantinople, they blocked that route. So the Europeans could not go to Eastern Europe. That's how they started looking for another, another way to Eastern Europe without going through Istanbul. And there was the, the huge continent of Africa in the middle. They were now looking for a sea route to the east. This effort was led by the Portuguese who arrived at what is now Sierra Leone around 1472. By 1482, a Portuguese man called uh, Bartholom uh, no, Diego Cama, a, a, a Portuguese man called Diego Cama, got to where Angora is now, 1487. Another Portuguese man called Bartholomew Diaz got to Cape, Cape Town, Cape of Good Hope. That's why he called it the Cape of Good Hope, because he saw, you know, Africa is so huge. It is from latitude, I think, 37 north up to latitude 30 something south. To, go, to, 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 to cover the whole length of it, you, you go through almost 80 latitudes. You, the teachers of geography, you know latitudes and, and longitudes. So, Bartholomew Diaz, in 1487, was able to see that the coast of Africa appeared to be turning east, because all the time it was north, south, north, south, and south. Eh. 
African Eruguayo D. Now, in 1487, Bartholomew Diaz saw the coast going turning east. That's why he called Cape Town the Cape of Good Hope. The hope to go around Africa by sea. Now, in 1498, on Christmas Day, another Portuguese man called Vasco da Gama went around the Cape of South Africa and landed at a place called Na Natal. Natal is from a Latin word meaning to be born, na nativity because he was there on Christmas Day. Now, this is where I have the a problem with the kings. You kings, you are busy fomenting wars among us, between Bunyoro and Buganda, Uganda and Bunyoro, Uganda and Korea and Korea and Rwanda. You are, you are doing that. Maybe you are doing it because you are ignorant. You didn't know the wider world. But after Vasco da Gama, because when he went around the, the, the South African coast, he came through the East African coast, attacked Mombasa, and went on to India. So, information was coming from the coast that, you know, there are new, strong people who are coming. Bazungu are coming. These people are called Bazungu from Swahili. Because when they go to the East African coast, the, our, the people there ask them, where are you going? And they said, to Nazunguka. We are going around. <laughs> Then those people said, these are Bazungu. Kuzunguka in Swahili means to go round. So, even if you are ignorant, but you now hear that new people have come, why would you not get common sense and say, let us get together? You Nkore, you Bunyoro, you Buganda, you Rwanda, instead of fighting, let's get together and prepare ourselves. But no, they were not interested. They were busy fighting, fighting among, among themselves. You can check from 1498, when, when Vasco da Gama passed by the, the East African coast, to 1862, when the first white man came here, I had calculated some time ago, I think it is like 370 years. You can calculate it. How many years from 1498 to 1862 when Huntington Street came here? It is almost 400 years. Danger is coming. You are hearing about it but you are doing nothing about it. So, the Europeans came and conquered the, the, this whole place. I think you must have studied this in, 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 in the political history. By 1900, the whole of Africa had been colonized. And when they came, they had now, because between 1400 and 1900, we had the problem of the kings fighting among, fighting, make, making us fight among ourselves instead of uniting us. When the Europeans came and conquered, conquered them, they came and captured them like grasshoppers because they were busy fighting one another. They tried to fight, but it was too late. 
Kawani Agad, Manga, and even the other kings in South Africa, they tried, they, they couldn't, because they, were, they, they were, had divided our people. They talk about technology, but technology was, of the European that time was not really very advanced. In Ethiopia, the Ethiopian king, Menelik, defeated the Italians. In 1896, he defeated them. So if they had been united and more organized, uh, even with spears and arrows, they could have uh, defeated th those guns, because the guns of that time were not, were not that efficient. So the main problem was division. And if you see, the army which captured Kavarega was not a European army. Europeans were very few. It was Baganda being used by the, by the, by the, by the British who, who were do, doing mo most of the work. It was African on African fight. It was, the Europeans were just the, 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 the mobilizers. So therefore, between 1400 and 1900, you have the problem of the tribalism fomented by the kings. Now, when the Europeans capture the whole of Africa, they now bring a new poison, the poison of re religious conflict. Well, you people who have studied uh, history, European history, you know the problems of Europe the religious conflicts there, Catholics, Protestants, fighting, what they were calling the 30, 30 years war, the, 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 the war with the Muslims, the, the Crusades. So now we had the poison of the kings making us fight along tribal lines and clan lines and so on. Now, you had a new poison of re re religious conflict. You can imagine, you can check this on your phone. The first Church of Uganda people came here in 1877. The Catholic, uh, Roman Catholic group came in 1879. By 1890, our people were fighting religious wars. Can you imagine? In 10 years. But I'm so good in Ghana because of, of, of religion. You, of 10 years. You don't even know what it means. You are start fighting among yourselves. So that problem also was, was now added. So you had now two problems. You had a sectarianism of tribes which the kings had, had left, and now you had additional sectarianism of religious groups. And that's how, and in the colonial times, the, the two poisons were, were there. That's how now the NRM comes on the scene. In the 1860s, early 60s, as a student group. So when we come, we say, ah, what Kisembo was telling you here, that, that one of the topics you covered was forces that cause social change. This is what I want you really to, to, to get very clearly. What are the forces that cause social change? How does society come to change from one level to another level? And this one you study in a study we call political economy. Not politics, not history, not uh, what is sociology, but what political economy. Political economy is the study of the laws that govern the motion 
and the changes in society. And when you do that, you, you, things will be uh, much easier for you. Now, when we studied political economy of the human race, because the human race, remember, has been here for four and a half million years. We've been here for four and a half million years. And the human being started here in Africa. Now, the human being is the main agent of change in society. Why? Because the human being has got three characteristics from, from other creatures. He has got a superior brain, a brain which thinks and reasons. He has got a hand, a hand which, which works, which can hold things and, and tools. And he stands on two legs. He's, he's bipedal. He's not like the reptile whose head is always in the, in the grass. If your head is in the grass, when do you have time to think and see far? So the human being, and here, he, here you link with the Bible. That's why, that's why we, for us we say, those who say there's a difference between the story of science and the Bible, and the Bible story is not true. Because even, even in the book of Genesis, which uh, Barinda was, was quoting, it says that God created man on Saturday, after he had created all those insects and, and frogs and all those, and he told man, establish dominion over nature. Uh -huh. Meaning, man is the one to influence the rest and, and manage the rest of the, of the creatures. So because of that, man was facing now two, one problem. He was, he was created, he was here, or he had, he had evolved. And, uh, but he was facing a lot of problems. Floods, drought, disease, wild animals. Ah, all these were problems to man. But because of his ability to think and to, to do things, he was able to develop tools, quickly develop tools. Initially, stone tools. If you go there in, in the villages, you, you, you ask me, for, because of me, I am <laughs> an ancient person of this area. If you go in the villages, you'll find the tools there. Orubeyango, that's a stone tool. Orubeyango, a grind, grinding stone. Esaiso is a stone tool. The, the other small one. The, the, we don't even have them in English. Enkurungu, Yokonda, the one for crushing things. Eshekuru, the, 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 the one of uh, a, wooden, a, a wooden mortar. Omhini, the one for Kshekura. Echuzo, the one for threshing. Uh, the, you, you can mention Ichuba uh, for watering the cows. Uh, the, uh, so, the ability of man to make tools and use tools to do work is what eventually made man to improve his way of life. Now, one and a half million years ago, Man invents fire. You can imagine from four and a half million years ago, up to one and a half million years ago, there are some different dates, but it was the wrong time. Man did not know how to make fire. 
But when he learned how to make fire, before making of fire, human beings were in the trees. We are tree dwellers. Because the trees were safer. If you want to run away from the wild animals, you, you stay in the trees. But they are not comfortable. The rain, the cold, the insects, they all eat you there. But when he invented fire, he was able to go from the trees and become on, on land here. And like fire and scare away the wild animals. And also go in the caves. In the caves, because with fire now you can, you can light, you can see, you can warm, you can, you can chase the snakes out of the, of the caves. So man came from the, the trees where he was using arms mainly to move around what is called brachiators. Those animals which move by their arms are called brachiators. He was able to come from being a brachiator to being a bipedal, an animal mainly walking on, on two legs. So therefore you can see now what is the stimulus that causes change in society. It is the development of science and technology. If science and technology advances, society will also change. Example, the invention of fire. How it revolutionized, uh, how it revolutionized society from being tree dwellers to, 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 to come land, to come land, ground-based dwellers and even cave dwellers. And you can go and quote other examples. The Europeans were able to conquer us because they had invented gunpowder. They had also learned how to, how to make quinine because initially they couldn't survive here because of the malaria. But when they, they learned how to make quinine out of, uh, from the South Americans, they were able now to use it to defend themselves against, uh, against uh, malaria. Then eventually they, 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 they invented uh, a train to be able to move, steam, steam engine. So science was making them stronger and were becoming weaker. So therefore, in, in, in order to grasp the, the crucial issues about social change, you must get, understand that it is called the first law of sociology, which means the necessary conformity between the advance of science and concomitant changes in society. So therefore, I'm very glad that you have been exposed. And you can go example by example, example by example, example by example. Culture, even everything will change, even culture. Like our old culture of the Waganda, the way or the, the one they, the way they greet. You meet a Muganda woman, she kneels on the road. Or you out here. Now, how would you do that when you are in cars? You, you wave. That's how you say jambo, jambo, jambo. Now, you don't have time for that. For that, elaborate, elaborate, because you can see that elaborate way of greeting was based on pedestrian life. When people were walking on foot, that's how they could have time to, 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 to do this. So therefore, I'm glad that you've been exposed to political economy from what Sembo was saying. Now, once you have covered that, then the next question is, what are the historical missions? What are the historical missions? To ruin of our we are here to do what? When we got independence, what was independence for? Independence should have had three aims. Number one, prosperity. Prosperity. 
do you want us to be prosperous or not? If you want everybody to be prosperous, how would they, how would that be? Now, in order for us to be prosperous in a modern way, they must have told you that each adult person had to learn how to produce a good or a service and sell it. You, you are teachers, you are providing a service of teaching. And the more people that learn from you, the more useful you become. But, like the Banyankore and the other tribes in the West, you have cows, you have banana plantations. So in order for you to be prosperous, you'll be able to sell the milk, sell the beef, sell the bananas, sell the other things you have. But when it, within Ankore, I have cows, my neighbor has cows. I have bananas, my neighbor has, has bananas. Therefore, my neighbor cannot buy from me, nor can I buy from him. Why? Because we have got similar products. Uh -huh. So how shall we get prosperity? If, if, if I'm calling, it's cut off alone. How shall we get prosperity? Who are the people who buy the products of the Banyankore. If you study carefully, you'll find that the people who buy those products are the people of Kampala. They are the ones who buy the milk, who buy the beef, who buy the bananas. So therefore, this means that the prosperity of the Banyankore depends more on Uganda than within the Banyankore alone. Within the Banyankore, where they contribute to one another's prosperity, that they produce the same product. We all produce milk, so there's a lot of milk in this area, and marketing is easy, but it's a big, big quantity. Same with beef, same with bananas, same with tea, same with coffee. But in terms of buying from one another, they, it's not so much. So, that's why you now come to the principles of NRM. If my prosperity is depending on the people from Kampala to buy my milk, to buy my beef, to buy my bananas, That means I need Uganda. In addition to my own area, Uganda is very crucial for me. So that's why therefore NRM, after analysis, we said, oh, you people. People are telling you about tribes, about religion, but this is a, a trap. You are going to die in poverty forever. What will help you to get out of poverty is Uganda. Because Uganda will help you to buy your products more than your own area. That's why therefore principle number one is patriotism. Love Uganda. Why love Uganda? Because you need it. And you can go and analyze. Look at their choices. They all produce sim sim. This one is producing sim sim. The neighbor is producing sim sim. This cannot buy from the other one. The other one cannot buy from the other one. So who buys the sim sim? People of Kampala. If you go to to Busoga, Barukuri maybe Kado. Bona Barukuri maybe Kado. Waiswa Barukuri maybe Kado. 
Umsogo, umsogo, umrara, kurumibuka, do. So, who buys from the other one? So, therefore, when you analyze, you'll find that our prosperity depends more on Uganda than our respective tribal areas. And if somebody comes and says, we, we are this tribe, we are this tribe, you should know that that person is an enemy of that tribe first and foremost. Because if that tribe was not part of Uganda, it would not be prosperous. So this is principle number one. I, I, I'm, I'm sure they, they explain this to you, but, but uh, there's no harm in, in, in me as a summary repeating it. But secondly, as we settle down and produce more and more and more, we find that the internal market of Uganda is not enough. That's why we talk of the market of East Africa, the market of Africa. And that now takes us to point number, principle number two, Pan-Africanism. But how will you benefit from all this if you still remain in the old ways? Because I was born in Tungamo, and by 1960, we were there in Tungamo, only working for, the, for eating. We had, we had cows, we had banana plantations, potatoes, and all that, but all, all of them for home consumption. Very little for the market. We are still in Okora Echida Chonka, as they say in one of the tribes in the east, Bagwere. Bagwere say Okora Echida Chonka. The other day, some years ago, I stopped at a place called Kagamba. Kagamba is on the way to Rashamiri. And I, I, I found a young woman there harvesting millet. I asked her, what are you going to do with the millet? The Okuganza the, the is to take the first crop to your father-in-law. So that was her mission. Has no, no, no issue of prosperity. Her issue was Okuganza Isheza. Now, that pre-capitalist mentality, that pre-money, Mentality, the, the mentality of people before the onset of money is very dangerous for our people. I went to a place called uh, Ndangaro. It's called, it's a parish called Ndangaro in Rubirizi. Do you have somebody from Rubirizi? Ah, you come. Omnyaruguru. Now, this was some, some years ago. I went to Vinyarguru, Rubirizi, got the microphone. I went to Rubirizi, that is parish called Ndangaro. Uh -huh, you are from where? Rubirizi. Which area? Ndeche. Ndeche? Yes. So that it will be in Ndangaro? Ndangaro is in Rutoto. South, Is the neighboring parish? Yes. Okay. How are they now? You, you wait a bit. Let me give my testimony first. <laughs> so when I went to Dangaro, I was told that there were 2,500 homesteads in Dangaro. All of them were democratically poor. They were all working for the stomach, only for eating, except only one man called Kateva, who had seven pigs. <laughs> he was the rich one. Then I, I realized, and the area is very fertile, so fertile, so fertile. 
So what is the situation now in Ndangaro, if you know them? The situation has changed. Huh? The situation has changed. When you came there, people changed. Mm -hmm. And that Ndangaro, as a parish, is a, is a model. Get near the... Ndangaro, as, as a parish, is a model. When you came and educated them, people changed. And the PDM is helping them. They have changed totally. Oh... Thank you so much. Now, but, but, uh, would, would you have that how many homesteaders? Because that time there were 2,500. I will make a research, Mr. President. Thank you. When you yes. go back, you do research. And Kateva is one of the now, one of the richest because he doubled those pigs. He, and he, giving he, people other. He has now got more pigs and so on. Yes. Very good. Yes. So thank you very much. Welcome. You understand? Then there is another parish called Rengaju. Rengaju is a parish in, in Kavarore. Is there somebody who knows Rengaju? Rengaju parish. Anybody who knows Rengaju? Huh? The, the girl of uh, the Chenjojo. This is another one. Your Get near the microphone. From Kavarole district. Uh huh. Do you know Rengaju? Yes, sir. Now I'll give you my testimony of Rengaju. I visited Kavarole and they had a chairman called Kayonga. Ha, Kayonga could speak. Speak, 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 speak. I said, but you people, I want to see wealth creators who are earning income. But they spend so much time in the district council talking, talking about the roads, about what. Then in the afternoon, like uh, around three, they took, me, they took me to a place called Chembogo. Chembogo is like a stock farm. Yes. Huh? Yes. It's a stock farm, a government stock farm. Yes. Then they showed me a nice maze there. <laughs> then I said, whose maze is this? They said, never show you your government. Your government. But I'm not, I'm not looking for government, for government things. I want people, people, people. Ah. Then they said, Haruho Mnyoro Kabagambi. Did you know, did you know Kavagambi? No, you didn't. Uh, home, Yoro Kavagambi. I said, okay, let's go and see Yoro Kavagambi. So we went. His Excellency, uh, Reverend Balinda, also, uh, as he works in Nyakasura School, which is in Fort Porto City, okay. knows that place a little more than my young sister. I know Yoro Kavagambi very well. And is he still alive? Is this the, the, the father died. The, they died, but the sons are there. Oh, very okay. dynamic. Okay. Mm. So, when I went to Kavagambi, I said, to, let's go and see Kavagambi. So we went. We found he was there. He, had, he, he was actually not a villager. He was a, like a former agricultural assistant. He was educated. And I said, uh -huh. what are you saying? into the Amata. Amata, how many liters? Rita Makumiana. I said, okay. I want to have a name in Murukaguno Gwarwengaju. People who are like you in Rengaju Parish, which had 1,500 people, homes. How many are they? They were so many people who there may be seven. So I really quarreled with those people. You can imagine, 2,500 in Dangaro, only Kateva had seven pigs. Here, 1,500, only Avantum Musanji, only seven who have. So the concept of social economic transformation, which is point number three, is of the NRM is that everybody 
must get out of the traditional way to the modern way of money making with the Chivaro. So what is the situation now in Rwengaju and those in the... Uh, uh, His, Excellency, His Excellency, Rwengaju now is a model village. Uh, very many households have transformed economically. Mm. The Kawagambe family is a model family because all the sons have taken on agriculture. And recently, in the newspapers, when they were publishing the best farmers... They were among them. They were among them. Thank you so much. Thank so, 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 therefore, po point, uh, 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 principle number three of the NRM, in order to benefit from pe the patriotic market of Uganda, in order to benefit from the Pan-Africanist market of Africa, which we are always working on, you must undergo social economic transformation at the society level, at the homestead level. That's why principle number three of the NRM is social economic transformation. Patriotism, love Uganda. Why love Uganda? Because you need it. Number two, Pan-Africanism, love Africa. Why love Africa? Because you need it. But number three, you cannot love and benefit from Africa if you do not undergo transformation, become a new person. Now number four is democracy. Finally, the issue of uh, so social economic transformation. How do I socially economically transform myself, my family? We tell you there are four addresses where you can tr socially transform yourself. They are, they are called sectors. Sector number one, agriculture, commercial agriculture with the Chivaro. I don't have time to go into that, but I'm, I'm sure they, have, they, will, they will have explained it to you. Sector number one social, uh, of social economic transformation is commercial agriculture with the Chivaro. Number two, manufacturing. Number three, services like this one of teaching, medical. Those are services, transport, hotels. And number five, number four, ICT. Now, finally, for you as intellectuals, as educated people, as change makers, you come to issues like salary, salary of this, salary of that. For us, we have been advising you that whatever you do must be organically linked. The, the state cannot be able to pay good salaries if, the, if there is no social economic transformation. Because you see, if the families undergo social economic transformation, some families are in agriculture, some are in manufacturing, some are in uh, services. They create jobs and people get income and sell. When they sell, they are able to pay taxes. When they are able to pay taxes, the government gets more money. The government is able to do infrastructure, deal with, the, with, the, with peace and security, and also pay pay salaries to, to public servants. But how will it pay salaries, good salaries, if there is no social economic transformation? Where does it get money from? That's why we, like, like some of us, we were fighting from 1971 up to 1987. All that time we were fighting for no pay. Nobody was paying us. Who was there to pay us? But we knew that even if we are not paid ourselves, even if we die, 
if Uganda stabilizes and grows, even when we are dead, those people would be there would say, ah, we say we are one of the lady. They will remember us. But if Uganda becomes like a Somali, Somali and collapses, who will remember us, whether we live or die? So that's why we had the confidence to say, ah, let's fight for nothing. Even if we die, if we succeed, the, 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 the new generation will remember our, our children. We shall save Uganda. Uganda will be saved. Now, when we took over government, we were earning small salaries for a long time. Up to now, me, I earn a small salary. They said, President, I, I, I earn 3.6 million. I deduct 20% for NRM. So my virginity on her account, she gets 2.7 million. That is the salary of the president. They were saying, no, 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 you must get, you must be like you, like where, like, like where. I said, no, 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 no. I will not accept high salary. Now I cannot, because it is self-deception. High salary from where? Let the economy grow fast, grow fast, grow fast, grow fast. When I'm already dead, the, the rich Uganda would say, oh, this man worked for, not, for very little. Let's, let's give something to his children. So that's why, therefore, this cult of ideology is very crucial. Because when you're not clear, you, you get lost, you fight things which, have no, which are not realistic. And that's why they, 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 they fail. Now, recently, uh, I was in a war, a, a small war, with you, the teachers, led by a man called Baguma. You know, you know Baguma? There's the, the, a gentleman called Baguma. Uh, in my Chiekera way, because we the Chiekera, we go, come come and go to Uganda. A quarter in Pola Korachi, Bugu City, uh huh, in Korea, Ava Yekera. Now, when we started getting a bit of money, we, have, we, we got a bit of money now. I said, let us pay the scientists well. Eh, or the time you're trying to get out. You only pay the scientists only. Are we not also educated? I said, yes, you're educated. But when we're in the hospital, we look for the midwife. Doesn't mean the midwife is the most important person in the whole of society. Now, at that very moment, the midwife is the one most needed. So, these scientists, we need them immediately now. Because we are making roads, they need engineers. We are building factories, they need mechanical engineers. We are doing this, we need health medical doctors. Vet, we are talking of vet, PDM, PDM, what, what, we need, uh, uh, immediately we need them now. I studied uh, arts, I'm a person of arts. I studied literature, I can tell you what Shakespeare said, what he was, he was looking this way, he said this, I, I, I I acted, I acted Julius Caesar of all the wonders of the world I yet have known. It seems most strange that men should fear seeing death and necessary and it will come when it will. Julius Caesar. But now we have got a bridge. We need somebody to f fix this bridge. I cannot come with my Shakespeare and fix it. So that's why we say, ah, Banangi, to make Kayana. The, the bridge will, will produce other things and we shall eventually all be paid. So this is really the, the, the logic. But when people 
are not clear ideologically, they will not understand all this. It, everybody is me, me now, me now, me now. And in the end, you fail. So I am very glad that these courses are going on. I thank uh, Seku again uh, for, for these courses. Uh, from your testimony, I can see that you, you benefited and uh, I congratulate you. It is now my honor to commission you to do what? What do I do, Seku? To pass them out. I pass you out. Thank you very much, Jaja. Yes, I believe these teachers are going to preach the right gospel. Your Excellency, allow me to recognize the RDC of Untunga Mokadam Chung Godfrey, who is present. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations once again. A message from Dr. Charles Chisembo says his restaurant is very active. We shall not travel in the night. You will stay back for bull roasting and cocktail, cutters of the doctor. The buses shall leave at 6 in the morning. And also, Judge has given you something, for some air time, to just appreciate your effort and for being resilient, for having been here for the last two weeks. Thank you, Judge. Ladies and gentlemen, let's rise up for the anthems in reverse order. Then Michael MC will take charge. Thank you, Your Excellency, for gracing this occasion. What is left on our agenda, as earlier on requested by the Commission of Patriotism Corps, is having a photo of opportunity with the various groups that are here. Not to delay, we shall have... Balanda, Haj Kakande, the Director, National Leadership Institute, and the RDC Chankwanzi. Of course, not leaving out the Commissioner, National Secretariat of Patriotism Club. Particularly